let's see how we can uh, get a project that is not very well documented, that is lacking in tests and automation, and how we can get that into a more uh, robust uh, place. We'll do a little bit of automation, we'll write some tests, we'll figure out what's going on with the project, and uh, we'll build some automation to prevent errors from happening in the future. It is pretty common to own repositories or get assigned repositories like this one that in this case they are not very well documented. Actually I would call these not documented at all. So we will fix this in a second but first what I want to do is I want to understand what is going on. So I'm going to go into web app here. This seems to be a Python application. It has a main.py. So I'm going to open this and try to figure out what is going on here. It looks like it uses the fast API framework and this fast API API framework is going to be uh, loading some historical data, it's going to be serving some documentation that is going to redirect to docs, that looks uh, correct to me, and it's going to apparently uh, respond to certain API requests, in this case it's a GET request uh, for slash countries, and if the country exists with the city and the month, it will provide some uh, monthly average, what it seems like to be a temperature. So if I go to whether that Jason, I'll see that there's some countries like England and France and uh, cities like uh, Paris that are included, but it seems to me that this is not a very extensive uh, list of countries and cities, and uh, right away if I go back to main.py, I'll see that relying implicitly like this in Python might ca cause some errors. So I'm going to first uh, check if there's some tests, and if there are some tests I can see if I can get some validation going before I make some changes. So in test underscore main, I can see that there's only two tests, one for root and one for countries. However, there's no uh, testing involved for the situation where a city might not exist or a or, or not a month, but a country might not exist. So those two might need to get addressed. Yeah, this is an HTTP API, so I would like to get this addressed in a very nice way. So uh, before I get into that, uh, let's actually start writing tests. And one of the things that I like to do is instead of opening uh, test main there, I'm going to open this to the side. So having it side by side will allow me to uh, basically have a better idea as to what is it that I'm writing. So I'm going to write that test and this already looks correct. Let me see. Response equals client get countries uh, Spain. Uh, Madrid in January and I am going to accept that and instead of uh, Spain and Madrid how about I do a different type of city so Baya Dolit in Spain. I'm going to save that and I'm going to run the test. So I'm going to toggle the terminal and I'm going to run PyTest which is how I run the tests in this project and it seems that I get a key error. Now I don't want a key error, I want to get uh, I want to get a, four, a, a 404 which would indicate that this is not available. So instead of returning that, I am going to return a 404 uh, if the country or city is not found. So I'm going to have to say country and I'm going to try to do this in a very uh, nice Pythonic way. And I'm going to say city is going to be country get city. Uh, this is not needed. And then uh, if not uh, country or not city, I want to raise here a problem. So uh, I want to raise a 404. So I'm not sure how to do this with fast API. So I'm going to ask uh, here Copilot. I'm going to say, how can I get a 404 from fast API uh, here? So let me see what uh, we'll get to return a 404. Uh, we can use the HTTP exception class from fast API. Uh, exceptions. So that looks uh, to me correct. So let me go ahead and, um, and and get that imported. And I think if I go here, I can say fast API and I can do HTTP exception and I'm going to save that. I'm going to scroll all the way down, go to where I was actually writing that code. I'm going to say HTTP exception and I am going to follow and I'm going to do that. I'm going to run my tests again. I'm going to do PyTest and I'm getting passing tests. So perfect. So we're making some progress here. I'm going to remove the chat right now to give me some room to take a look at what we have here. And this looks already uh, pretty good. Now, test monthly average missing, it tells me that the country or city not found. But that is kind of like 
um, trying to get an error that will help me uh, doing two, two things at the same time. I prefer my test to be slightly more granular. So uh, how about we do def uh, test monthly, uh, monthly average missing country. So we can actually do something different like Canada. That seems correct. And uh, that should be uh, one for missing country. And then we could do test monthly average missing city. And because Spain does exist in the country uh, for uh, for Spain, uh, Spain exists and Valladolid doesn't exist. So by renaming this, I provide more clarity and I understand exactly what is going on. Now, in this case, uh, we're good to go and we have a couple more tests and this starts to look more robust. The next thing that I want to do is actually go and improve my readme. So I'm going to close my test underscore main and uh, in here this looks uh, pretty bleak. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to poke around some of the files and I can see that there's even a make file. So that tells me that I can run this application running that command. Uh, make files are sometimes not very common with Python applications but that is fine. I want someone else to run this to get to this uh, project and start uh, actually having an idea on how to run it. So let's start by uh, installing dependencies and uh, in uh, Python is uh, kind of tricky with uh, dependencies. Uh, start by uh, and I, I think like doing installing dependencies in the requirements that file is great, but I also want to suggest doing it, uh, do it with a, a virtual environment to avoid conflicts. Perfect. So I'm going to do that. And the first thing is not pip install requirements. I need to make sure that Python uh, creates the virtual environment. And this is one way to do it. And then to source uh, VM being activated. So that looks perfect. And then install with requirements that text and we're going to do that with the shell and then that looks correct to install the requirements the next thing is that i want to involve more things here on how to run it and how to do other things with this project so i'm going to use the copilot chat here and i'm going to say I'm going to use this uh, special agent, which is called Workspace. And Workspace will try to figure out exactly what it needs to include in order to respond to my questions. And in this case, I want to, uh, I want to uh, thoroughly, uh, thoroughly document how to start this application, then run it. And finally, as a developer, I want to understand how to actually run some tests. It seems that this project uses PyTest. So I'm going to use that. And behind the scenes, GitHub Copilot is going to try to figure out what are some of the things and what are some of the constraints that it needs to happen and what are some of the context files that it needs to figure out in order to provide an accurate and well-rounded response. Perfect. So it completed and it gave me a little bit of context on how to uh, get these uh, things installed, the dependencies installed, how to actually run it. And uh, this actually gives me a very good idea. And PyTest web test underscore main is correct as well. And this will run all the tests in test underscore main uh, file, which actually looks uh, pretty good. Now, uh, this is actually very accurate and will allow me to uh, continue documenting this to uh, run, like, for example, running the app. And these suggestions will help me uh, get uh, get everything running very well documented. So I'm going to go ahead and write a little more documentation and, and let GitHub Copilot help me out. To run the app, you will use the make file, the make run. And now uh, Copilot understands that this is how I'm running this specific uh, project and it's going to uh, help me out. One last thing that I want to do is I want to go to make file and add a new target so that I can actually run some tests. So I'm going to say uh, test and uh, for that I'll say just by test and that looks uh, correct. The next thing that I want to do is I want to actually make some automations. So I'm going to push all of these changes to GitHub and I'm going to want to add some automation to prevent, uh, prevent mistakes and to run these uh, in a way that it happens automatically. So I want to uh, create a GitHub uh, action workflow to run tests uh, with make test automatically for every pull request. 
So I want to let uh, GitHub uh, Copilot figure out how, how can I do that and so that I can actually add that test in, in a file uh, where I can push that to GitHub and make that automatically. Great, so this finished and uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, things happening here. It tells me that I need a .github slash workflows uh, slash test.yaml. So let me go ahead and create that. So I've created the test.yaml. I'm gonna go back to the chat and I'm going to click this button so that I can insert everything at the cursor. This looks pretty well. Uh, it's going to install the dependencies. It's going to tell that the uh, acti uh, to activate the, uh, the virtual environment, it's going to install the requirements and then it's going to run make test. That looks perfect and I'm going to, and I'm ready actually now to uh, commit my changes and push everything back to GitHub. I'm going to go to my source control here and instead of like writing everything down, I'm going to click on uh, this magical button here that will generate a commit message with a GitHub Copilot and I'll commit and push directly to my uh, repository. It will put uh, all of my changes uh, and then push them and commit them as a single commit. So I'm back here on the repository. Uh, you can see here that uh, this was actually created and uh, submitted. Uh, nothing was triggered yet. My GitHub workflows is there. So I'm gonna make a quick, a quick change and try to make something uh, uh, so, uh, like a small change so I can create a pull request and run some tests. So Python weather API uh, that helps you with average temperatures. So I'm going to commit the changes and I'm going to say create a new branch and start a pull request. I'm going to propose the changes and once I do that I'm going to say create a pull request. This looks, well it's kind of bleak. I should add some description but I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to create the pull request very quickly. And uh, you can see here that this is going to check if everything's okay. And now my run tests uh, pull request is getting queued and something is going to be running. GitHub Actions is doing all of the automation behind the scenes and it will tell me if I have passing tests or I have something that I need to fix. All right, so bummer, this actually failed. And so it failed after 12 seconds. So let's actually take a look at what happened there. And when running the tests in the log output, I can see that uh, there's a problem. I have a PyTest, not so no such such file or directory. So I'll probably go ahead and need to fix that. In any case, if I had to actually have a, a failing test, uh, this would prevent me from actually merging all the things that I need in order to get uh, this project into working condition. So this is a very good way of not only documenting and running some tests, but also doing it with automation, which will help you get your projects into a better, more robust state. So we were able to add some tests, uh, validate that our uh, work was actually very good. And then we were able to document this so that the next engineer, including myself, when I go back to this project uh, in a month or so uh, back again to it, I will remember exactly how to run it and what are some of the things I need in order to set it up. And lastly, we added some automation to prevent some of those mistakes from getting into the repository. We had some issues with the path. Uh, those are easy to solve, but at the end, we will be able to uh, get some failures or some tests passing reported back into the pull request that will give us enough confidence when we want to push that merge button.